Once you get to a certain point in your jewelry business, you won't grow anymore if you don't get someone to support you on your team. So whether that's a VA or eventually hiring a second in command, or as I like to call them, a number two or an operator or an integrator on your team. So if you've been thinking about getting your number two in place, or you're thinking about hiring and starting to build your team, you're going to love today's episode. I am interviewing this great business, Lita Seaglass, Carla Garrow, and Sam Wunschel, and we're gonna talk a little bit more with them momentarily. I'm Tracy Matthews. I am the Chief Visionary Officer of Flourish and Thrive Academy and the host of the Thrive by Design podcast. I've helped over 8,500 different jewelry business owners launch, grow, and scale successful six, multiple six and seven figure businesses using my desired brand effect methodology. And today I have the pleasure of interviewing Carla Garrow and Sam Wunschel again from Lita Seaglass to talk a little bit about their journey in working together as a business owner, founder, and an integrator operations person. I think you're really gonna enjoy how they have came together to work together and also to hear a little bit more about how they've made this partnership very successful. Even though they aren't technically business partners, they work together like business partners for a common goal, to grow the business. So let's dive in to today's episode. Well, welcome to the show. I'm super excited to have some very special guests on the show today. You may remember Carla Garrow of Lita Seaglass. She was on the show a couple of months ago talking about live selling. After that episode, Carla and I were talking about her number two or her second in command, AKA operations person. We're gonna use some general terms here, Sam. And I'm excited to have them both here to talk about this conversation. And I'm gonna massacre Sam's last name, Sam Wunschel. Welcome to the show. There we go. We got it. We got it this time after trying a few times. <laughs> Thanks so much for being here, you guys. Thanks for having us. Well, I'm so excited. So Carla and I were coaching for a while together and I've been able to witness her growth in her business over the past several years. It's been super fun to watch. And at a certain point, she needed some extra help and ended up bringing someone on to support her in her business. So we're going to really dig deep into what it looks like to have a number two on your team and what, how they work together and just dig into all the nitty gritty. So my first question is for Sam. Sam, tell us a little bit about your journey in business. Like how'd you end up here? So I did not think that I would be doing what I do today when I started. They actually hired me as a packager. I had a couple of other jobs and I was in school full time. So I'm a computer science and criminal justice major, a dual major. So I was just on for a little extra packaging help at the holidays. And then over time, as I was working with Carla, she noticed that I had some, I don't know, strong <laughs> suits that were better suited elsewhere in the business. And she offered to have me um, try out some different roles. Mm -hmm. So Carla, what was that like for you? So it was a little bit unexpected because I didn't obviously know these qualities uh, that she had when I first hired her, but I did have in the back of my mind that I was, I very much was looking for somebody that had the qualities that she had, which is why I think it was helpful to really know exactly what you need so that when you see it, even if you're yeah. noticing it in an unexpected place, you're able to recognize it and switch, you know, sort of switch your plan or switch the role of that person because like Sam had mentioned, I had actually hired her for help doing some packaging at the holidays. And the more time we spent together, I just noticed, I'm like, okay, she's, you know, very tech savvy. Um, she's very good at doing, I call it multitasking, but switching basically from one task to the other. Obviously, we all know that being in business for ourselves, especially small businesses, there's so many different roles and hats you have to wear throughout the day. And you might be doing customer service and order fulfillment and all these different things going back and forth. And when Sam was doing the packaging, I noticed that, you know, our studio was small and very quickly she'd be offering to help out in a different area and just jumping back and forth and being able to then resume and pick up where she left off right away. And then she'd be apologizing for it. She's like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, I know I need to stay focused. And I'm like, no, don't apologize. This is amazing. I'm like, this is a really strong 
quality to be able to do a lot of things and, and keep yourself on, on track. So it was really nice. It just sort of happened organically. I didn't necessarily put an ad out for this position, but definitely had in my mind that I needed like a second in command, somebody that could have opposite strengths of me. And then I started to see that in her. So that was when her and I had the conversation. I was like, girl, you got to leave packaging and <laughs> come over and, and do some other things. Quit all <laughs> so, your other jobs, please. <laughs> Yeah, she did. Yeah, exactly. That was exactly what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Quit all your other jobs, come work for me full time and let's do this girl. So yeah. when I, what, one thing that I heard there, even beyond just multitasking that Sam does was really resourcefulness because what a visionary yeah. or a highly creative founder needs as their business is growing is they need someone who can create structure for them. So mm -hmm. what was going on for you, Carla, that made you feel like you wanted to like level her up. I know that you weren't necessarily intentionally thinking you needed number two, but like what was going on in your business where you were like, oh, I just need help with X, Y, and Z, whatever that might've been for you. So the business was, do you want to answer it? the exact moment. Okay, do you want to start it? <laughs> My origin story, we were looking for a new inventory tracking system. Oh yeah. So it kind of came up because Carla was looking at a couple of different products. We ended up trying trying out QuickBooks and then leaving it behind after deciding it wasn't for us. Yeah. But so she was looking to set it up and it was like a daunting task. It was a lot of technical things. And I had mentioned that I'd done something similar before. <laughs> and I was like, oh, could I maybe do that after I finish all my other stuff that I do? Like after I finish my packaging, could I take a crack at it? And that was when you're like, why don't you just make that part of your role? And I was like, oh my gosh, could I do two things? Yeah. I started noticing that she was really, you know, great in a lot of these different areas. So at the time, the business was definitely growing quickly. I was in, I did the TYC and then I program of yours. And then I followed mm -hmm. it up with momentum, which was wonderful. But as a creative person, being involved in your classes gave me so many more ideas <laughs> and I wanted to really be able to stay on track. I'm like, I need to be able to stay focused on what I can focus on. And I needed somebody to help me set up the backend systems for the different, the different jobs that we had inside of the business. So as soon, like I said, my studio was small. And so Sam saw a lot of this going on and just really automatically like would offer her help in these different areas. And so that turned into her then setting up the backend systems for each position and each role within the business. Okay. That's awesome. Because when I first, like a couple months ago, when we were talking, you're like, you were calling her your systems integrator and you started telling me everything that she did. I'm like, she sounds like your operations manager. And she's like, no, my operations yeah. manager is this other role. And I'm like, that's your production manager. I'm like, we got to get these roles right. straightened out. <laughs> it's <laughs> hard kidding. sometimes to know, I know what to title everybody, especially since I've only ever worked for myself. Yeah. Um, I don't have any other like, I just know what I know. <laughs> yeah. But the thing that's funny is that the title doesn't really matter. It's like, it's the two of you running the business, right? And you're yeah. coming together. Yeah. So Sam, like how, like, what are some of the roles that you've taken on in the business and taken off of Carla's plate? So my main thing that I do is that when there's some kind of stressor or thing that's not moving smoothly in the business, Carla and I get together and talk about it. Mm -hmm. She tells me like what her ideal outcome is. And then we come up with some options together. And my job is really to think about how each option could go. What are the good things that could happen? What are the bad things that could happen? What might not happen if we choose one of these options? And, and then once we make that decision, I take that idea and run with it and I make it happen. I also do manage our team. So I work on hiring and all the, the people things with our team, which is really fun. Mm -hmm. And setting up as we grow the back end, like of how, um, I don't really know how to call it, but like the process for yeah. each job position too. SOPs. So we do have, yeah, exactly. We mm -hmm. do have two virtual assistants that we're working with now. So Sam sets up all of, honestly, I don't even really know how to describe it because I could never do it. So like all the format formatting and papers that they need and, and all of the organization inside of our client CRM that they need to like keep their time tracked and everything organized. It's, it's amazing. I highly recommend everybody get to Sam. <laughs> everybody gets to Sam. <laughs> Which I, I'm sitting here like giggling a little bit because Carla, we're so much alike. It's like, I, I say this because like typically the creative founders, like the idea of people in a company 
we're all very similar in a lot of ways. We have a lot of ideas. Yeah. We have a hard time creating structure because it's not yeah. necessarily our natural gift. While there are super highly organized, I'm sure visionaries out there, our gift is like, okay, I've got this idea. I'm going to design this thing. I have this marketing promo I want to do. But then like, you're like, we're great starters and great like at taking it over the line. But the middle part is so hard to get done. Do you feel that? Yes, I love the middle part. You love yeah, the middle part, right? Yeah, I definitely feel that. She <laughs> loves the middle part. And it is, I definitely feel the same way as you. And it's funny because every time that you and I would talk during mm -hmm. the coaching, I would be telling Sam about it. She's like, like you and Trace, there's so much alike. But it would get frustrating. So I would find myself getting frustrated because I genuinely love what I do. I genuinely love my company. And I wanted to have that structure and I did have it to a certain degree. It just was all up in my mind. It wasn't mm -hmm. necessarily in a process or written down on paper. So as our team grew, I couldn't teach anybody else how to do it. I couldn't be like, okay, here's everything you need to know. Go and do that. There also was something that I wanted to mention that I don't know if it would come up today, but I just wanted to explain for anybody listening, because this is something that hung me up for a long time, mm -hmm. is that I really thought a system had to be a very in-depth, like, I don't know what type of system I was looking for, but because my brain doesn't work in a systematized way, anytime somebody would say, create a system, create a system, I was looking, I think, to make it much more difficult than it has to be. So for anybody that's listening, that's starting out in business, you know, any system or process really can be as simple, you know, or as in-depth as your business is. It's just sort of documenting the exact way that you do things or the way that you like doing things so that you can then teach it to somebody else. I always thought of it more as like a computer, you know, operated an thing. Yeah. Website. An app or a website or something technical, but it really can just be as simple as documenting it on paper to then teach somebody else. So I just wanted to mention that. <laughs> it could also be as simple as creating like a, a screen recorded video of you doing the steps of a process and then handing it to someone like Sam to put it on the piece of paper. It's like, or recording Absolutely. training. So you've recently brought some new people onto the team and mm -hmm. I, I want to hear a little bit more about how Sam trains the team and what your, your part in that is, Carla. What have been some of the okay. challenges? What have been some of the hangups? How has this worked for you guys? And what have you learned from that experience? So with training the team, we have had a couple of team members join us recently. Uh, with training them, we really realized that it's important to have the process written out, documented, and know all the ins and outs of the position that we're putting them into before they join us. So a lot of times it's roles that we've already had previously filled. So it's nothing new. Well, except for one of them. Oh, that's true. Yeah. We did create a new role within our company. Yeah. Um, we have a designer now besides Carla, mm -hmm. an official designer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so something like that, I'm going to flip a little, but the challenge of having a new role is that we didn't have everything documented. So now it's finding out, you know, like when you go to teach someone, you have to stop and say, hang on, what do I do first? You have to stop and mm -hmm. look at each step before you teach it. So we're kind of at that stage of stopping and looking at each step that we do before we replicate it for the team member to learn from. For me, as having somebody, so we do have some key roles in our business that we were hiring for. I will say this, we've definitely put a system in place for hiring, which yes. is great because we've had to do it yes. so much recently as we've been growing, which I'm going to be completely honest, I think has been very, very daunting for me as a business owner. I mean, I just, I care so much about the people that are here and having the right culture fit that it feels very overwhelming to hire the right person for the right role, because if it doesn't work out, you know, we have a small team, there's only nine of us. So one of us, usually me, is then filling that position. So finding the right person, not only for the fit for the team, but for the role and to support us all is really important. But we've got our hiring process down to a science now, which is really wonderful. And I would strongly suggest to do because it comes up sometimes, even unplanned. We had a couple of positions that we were not planning on hiring for because we did have wonderful team members that were filling them. But, you know, somebody had a medical emergency come up and they couldn't work anymore. And 
we were sort of thrown into having to hire for that position again. So it's good to have a hiring process. And then for the new roles, particularly training somebody to be a designer, it's been a little bit difficult for me because I've been the only one that's really ever designed. And so trying to teach something that has just always been an organic sort of like creative process for me has been very, has been very challenging. So we've definitely done a lot of videos. We've done a lot of video recordings, a lot of like just systemized processes of working together. But then as I'm working together in training, also video recording that training so that we don't have to do it again in the future. And so that that person doesn't have to ask me again, they can then resort back to the video training. That's been very helpful in documenting that process. And also as it's a new role, like looking at how it's going to interact with the other parts of the business and the other people on our team, even just like how the designer communicates with you. Yeah. That's been something that we've had to, um, look at and add in. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So what's your process for delegation? Like, do you guys meet once a week and do the same page meeting? Or are you just like talking every day? Or like, how do you say like, Hey, Sam, like, let's talk. Like, I want to talk about this thing. Or is it structured? It definitely is structured. We talk like every day, I'd say before the team comes in and communication, I think is probably one of the best things that we have going for each other, which is why we're able to work so well together. There are definitely things that I handle and then things that she handles with the team. So for me, it's more of um, teaching like about the jewelry, how to make the jewelry, like because mm-hmm. we work with authentic sea glass jewelry, um, it is very unique. Even if somebody has jewelry training, they probably haven't worked with sea glass. So I'm the one that kind of talks to them and trains them about how to make the jewelry, the quality of the materials that we're working with in the process of the jewelry. And then Sam, I will talk with her either at the end of the day or at the end of the week, depending on you know, what we have going on and let her know some of the challenges that I see coming up uh, with the person that we're training. And then from there, she'll sort of put together some ideas as to how she can help them. So I'll give you an example. If we notice somebody is having a hard time structuring their time so that they're able to like bring something through to completion, she'll then work on sort of asking me like, okay, what are all the things that you're having them do? What is the time frame you would like it to be done by? And then she'll put together either like a time documented calendar or some sort of form to help them go over and manage their time so that we're, so she'll be addressing their exact, maybe like challenges that we're having and helping them move through it. Whereas I'm teaching them how to do the exact task or design the jewelry. I'll also check in every now and then and do an update with them of like, especially through the training process specifically, um, about like what the expectations are for them to be working on and learning as they're gaining confidence and kind of learning more about their role. I'll check in every now and then and be like, hey, you're doing great with this. This is what's on the horizon. And we kind of talk about anything that might come up for them or any, I don't know, tips and tricks of the trade that I can offer them. Right. And for each position we have, for their training period, we have it documented for things that they would be, I guess, well-versed in or comfortable with mm-hmm. by a certain time. So like week three, you know, we hope that you can have an understanding of the quality, you know, some of our wholesale designs, some of our retail designs. So we're giving them key points to resort to so that they know what we're looking for and they know how we're tracking it. And that was something basically that you had helped us with. So that's been working really well as we're starting to get multiple team members, because like this has been tough. Like we have three, no, let me see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Three in person people, which for us is a lot of to train at once, like new team members and then two virtual assistants. So that's five people being trained at once. And that's a lot. a lot. So you got to have your, there. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> I can't even imagine. And, you know, hiring is such a tricky thing. You know, it's disappointing. Like you put a lot of time and energy into the hiring process and then you have, you vet down your candidates and you're like really hopeful. And then sometimes in the 11th hour, they say no, or, or they don't sign the deal or you figure out something weird about the person. And you're just like, shoot, like I can't hire this person. And it's just like back to square one. It's like, it's such a, it's an ongoing necessity, but also (laughs) emotional roller coaster. That's a good way to put it. I wrote down a couple of notes here if you saw me writing because I have a, a couple of questions, more questions for you. How do you guys handle okay. disagreements? You're not going to like this answer. <laughs> we don't have them. 
<laughs> oh, you don't have them. We really don't disagree. I think, and I know that that's probably super rare. We've been working together for four years and we, so I, so these are the key points that I would give because everybody that's listening is probably like, oh my gosh, I don't believe you, but I'm telling you, these are the key points I would look for with somebody that you're working with. And I think this is why we're so like easily able to get along so well as we're working together is that we have so much trust in each other. We definitely have things that maybe like we don't see eye to eye on, or she has a different perspective than I have, but instead of it being a disagreement, it sort of feels more like she's looking at it from her perspective in the business of her role, you know, filling sort of like the systems and the team. And I'm looking at it more of the creative end or the overall business picture. So if we have something that we're not eye to eye on, usually I'll tell her like, okay, these are the key points that I need to get sure these things are met when we come to this agreement, whatever it is. And she'll say, okay, from my end, these are the things that I need for it to line up, you know, for this to work or whatever the the issue may be. And then whoever's wheelhouse it's in, if it's something to do with like jewelry or the creative part, I'll sort of have final say. And if it's something to have with the systems or the operations, then she'll have the final say. And we both trust each other so much in our sort of like zones of genius that we're fine with that because we trust each other's intention, even if it ends up being the wrong decision it's really important for me too, as like the leader of the company to allow everybody that space in their role to make a mistake so that then we can teach how to handle it and how to move forward. Because even if a mistake was to happen, I know that is in no way, shape or form her intention. She has the best intentions for me, for herself, for the company. So you have to have that trust and allow for there to be mistakes or wrong choices. Then you just have to like readdress, pivot and come up with a new plan. So that's such a great thing to say, because I think business owners feel like if someone, like, I think sometimes employees feel like if they make a mistake, they're gonna get in trouble. And if you allow Mm -hmm. like enough leeway for, you know, obviously you don't want the same things repeated over and over again, but like leeway for mistakes to be learning experiences, then you have resourceful entrepreneurs who are willing to take risks or excuse me, resourceful employees who are willing to take risk. And what it, the reason why this is so important, and, and Carla, I'm sure you've experienced this before, and Sam, maybe you too, is that if you can't create a self, like an independent team or the, where they can self-direct and get motivated without having to have approval from you, it's going to be harder to actually have a team than easier. So the more that you can empower right. your team to like be allowed to make mistakes, to learn from those mistakes and not having someone black fly off the handle. I mean, obviously, if there's a lot of money involved or something like that, then that's could be a massive thing that m- might be terms of, you know, firing or something like that. But also like, I, I feel like people have to be, a, have to have a safe place to make mistakes and know that if they make a mistake, their job's not on the line as long as they own up to it and take ownership. Yeah. And I think um, there's so many things that come up where things you know, don't necessarily go your way at the end of the day. Yeah. I can give a small example of how that happened when Sam, can I, share I was story? thinking about it, yeah. <laughs> when she first started working with me and taking over some of like the ordering responsibilities and things like that, there was a time right at Christmas where we had these little necklace cards that come in. And when they came in, they were the wrong card stock. So they were floppy. They didn't work. They wouldn't hold our necklaces. And immediately, since it was the first task of her moving out of the shipping department. She got really nervous and was really upset when they came in wrong. You know, we had like 5,000 of them and we had no time to correct the error because it was like two weeks before Christmas. So when she came to me, she was super flustered and upset. And I was like, listen, I said, we don't have time. Like, you know, put your emotions aside right now. We have to fix this problem. I wasn't mad. I wasn't upset. I understood it happened. And I showed her the steps of call the company, explain to them what happened, see what they can do, see what the turnaround time is, you know, get proactive. And it did two things. First of all, we realized that it was the company's mistake, not hers, which Mm. can happen, you know, obviously. And second of all, it put her into 
a mode of learning how to move forward and fix the solution. Because at the end of the day, you can sit there and be upset about what happened, but you have to keep moving and you have to find a solution. Mm -hmm. And I gave her the space to be able to do that. And there's been many mistakes since then, <laughs> but it's, we don't cry or get upset. She's just able to take control of the situation and, and move on and, you know, Talking come up with problem solving mode. Yeah, exactly. Problem solving. So, yeah. I wish everyone could have a number two, like you guys, you know, number one, number two <laughs> relationship, like you guys have. It's so great. I love it. It's amazing. I'm very lucky. <laughs> I want to know, this is an important question, like, because how has your business grown since Sam has kind of stepped into this number two role? So it's doubled since she started with us four years ago, probably even a little bit more than doubled. When she first started with us, we had, let me see, four team members. Mm -hmm. There's four of us. So now our team has doubled, our revenue has doubled, but even just the things that we're able to do and the way that we're able to do them just is so much better. So for an example, just with all of our website, we do a lot of Instagram live, like streaming, we do a lot of live selling. And then recently this year, we started doing a lot of video selling for our wholesale clients because we don't have sales reps. So it's been really cool to see her job evolve as well to sort of help with some of these backend tech things. And it allows me to do a lot of fun things because I'll tell her like, listen, I want to reach out to our wholesalers, but I'm not going to be taking a couple of weeks to travel all around the U.S. and she'll come up with fun ways that we can reach everybody. So the business has definitely grown and evolved. It's streamlined a lot of things and simplified a lot of the processes for our team so that it will allow us, you know, it took a while. It took those years to get that mm -hmm. set up. It was a good two and a half years that we only worked on developing the structure, de developing all of the standard procedures. And that was pretty much what she would do all day. And now that it's set up, now we're able to enforce it, you know, make it better and implement it, which it's almost like you have to sort of like crawl, you're like crawling for a little while and then you can get them in place and walk, but then eventually it catches up and you can just start to run. So it goes faster afterwards. <laughs> God, it's so amazing. Yeah. You're, you're just growing so quickly. And when you can, when you have someone who can just take the direction and run with it, it just makes all the difference. So yeah, for sure. I'm so excited, excited for you. So I want to ask you each the same question. If you were to give Carla, if you were to give one piece of advice to someone in your position four years ago who was thinking about bringing on a number two, even if they don't have a Sam who's already working for them, what piece of advice would you mm -hmm. give them? So I would definitely say to, if you're looking for somebody to, to fill that role, make sure that you clearly know your strengths so that you can hire somebody that has the opposite strengths. Because I feel like so often I hear everybody say like, oh, I want to duplicate myself, which is great because if you're a maker or a creative thinker, it can definitely, you know, be helpful. We have a few people that work here in the studio with us that make jewelry as well. But for your second in command and the person that you're going to be running everything with, you really need a polar opposite. Like I'm loud. She's quiet. Like, <laughs> you know, she's really smart with a lot of just all of the back end of the business. And I'm the creative one that would rather be like selling or designing and She's the one that can get hyper-focused with that stuff. So definitely look for your opposite for sure and know that. your strengths so that you can find somebody that will, you know, mirror that and, and sort of be that really good balance for you. <laughs> Sam, what would you say? To the visionary out there who's thinking that they need a supportive second, I would say keep an open mind because you never know where you'll find them and you never know in what way they'll come to you. For instance, like I didn't know that I was number two material when I met Carla and it kind of just happened naturally. So like look within your own team, look with the people that you know, look with the people that you don't know. Just mm -hmm. keep a really open mind about like, what you want and how you like to communicate and work and find someone who has a complimentary ideal. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. And then what about someone who's stepping into a number two role? What would you tell them? Don't be intimidated. Okay. <laughs> That's great advice. Yeah, because four years ago, I really thought it was a weakness that I like to do a little bit of everything. I had been in a retail chain store kind of environment previously, and I was with them for a couple of years and I got promoted through the ranks and they would always be upset with me 
for wanting to go back and do what I used to do, but also help out with what the other managers were doing. I always wanted to have a hand in everything. If I finished my task, I wanted to like be useful. And they were like, do your job and they clock out. So don't be intimidated and don't, I don't know, underestimate yourself. Don't sell yourself short because yeah. there's a role for you no matter how you think and who you are. There's someone out there who's like, oh, if only I had you. Right, exactly. I love that. <laughs> your business soul. Yeah. Where can we find you guys? <laughs> Share your website and your details. So we are litaseaglassjewelry.com for our website and then litaseaglassjewelry for Instagram. We're mainly on Instagram. That's our favorite place to hang out and to do lives. So yeah, Instagram's our, our, main, our main fun place. <laughs> Show up for their What's New Wednesdays. You'll, you'll all be inspired of, of different ways that you can sell your jewelry. They crush it on those live events. Yes, we love going live. It's our it's our favorite. Well, I should say my favorite area. It's my favorite too. Is it? It is. Oh. I like being behind the scenes for those. Okay. Yes. It's, it's usually fun. usually my face. And you'll see hand, Sam's hand come over and wave hi to everybody. But <laughs> she is always there helping out, which is another, you know, great thing that I'll say as we're closing, because a lot of the time it's like my face that you're seeing, but you're always hearing Sam in the background. So when you have a number two, that's, you know, coming onto the team with you, it's really nice even just to not have to do those things because I couldn't sit there and do the live selling and keep track of everything on the back end of the mm -hmm. computer. So it's a nice balance when you're able to, to find that match for sure. So great. You guys, thank you so much for being here. I so appreciate your time. I know that you are so busy and you can't come on twice to do podcasts in the last couple of months. So I appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you. We Thank appreciate you. the opportunity. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching this episode. It's Tracy here signing off. I also wanted to offer you one last little gift of mine. I've created the ultimate hiring template for marketing VAs. So if you're thinking about getting someone on your team, whether it's a number two or your first marketing hire, make sure that you download this resource. I'm giving you my exact job description, a step-by-step -step guide on how to hire successfully, and the process that you need to use to train your people effectively. Head on over to flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash hiring template to download that today.